everybody. Welcome to um, Rocky River Elementary's virtual science firm. So excited to be here. This is Mr. Haas, and I'm glad you guys could could join us. Um, students worked very hard on their science fair projects this year. The following presentation shows off that hard work and all that they learned throughout their projects. Hey everybody, it's Mr. Haas and uh, I wanna take a moment to share um, what should have been our science fair uh, before everything happened and we weren't able to actually do science fair and science night. Um, so all these students we had in fourth and fifth grade spent you know, about two months, about eight, nine weeks working on their science fair projects. Um, and it's a bummer that they didn't get the chance to uh, share that with you. So um, what I did was I contacted and got a hold of as many of the students as I can and got pictures of as many of the projects as I can. And I put them together as a PowerPoint. Some are just pictures uh, with short little explanations. Others, I have some videos of some students who are um, explaining their projects and others made PowerPoints. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. So um, I know it's not the same, but um, these, these students did an outstanding job. Um, and I wanted you guys to have the opportunity to, uh, to learn a little bit more about science and for our science fair students to have the opportunity uh, to share what they have learned. So I didn't get a hold of, of everybody. Um, that, that's been hard to do. Um, but anybody who did the science fair either has their presentation on here or um, the last few slides are the names of some of the students. So uh, make sure you're on the lookout for your friends and uh, I hope you enjoy. All right, so the first project that we have is Davion and Valerie, they're both fifth graders. And the purpose of their project was to explore the digestive system. And one important thing that they learned doing it was that the human body uses the process of digestion to break down food into a form that is absorbed by the body and used for uh, fuel. And because of the digestive system, that's the reason that um, us people and, and most animals and living things around the world um, can survive is because of this awesome uh, body system called the digestive system. The next um, project here is Anna Sophia's and Kayla's. They're both fifth graders. And their project was all about making crystals using evaporation. Um, they, when they did their experiment, they didn't quite get the crystals to work, um, but they used sugar and baking soda to try to create these crystals on a string. And they learned that when water and another substance are together and the water evaporates, you can get a chemical change or a physical change. And in their case with their project, the baking soda went through a physical change um, because even though it didn't turn into a crystal, it did turn back into hard baking soda and the sugar made a crystallized top but underneath it was still liquid so it's been really cool to see all the crystals and stuff that they grew um, out of baking soda and sugar and the different substances they used um, but here we go you can see it on their boards uh, how awesome their project looked next we have valdez a fourth grader and his project looked at a rock's ability to absorb water and most of you probably don't think about a rock being able to absorb water like a sponge but valdez did an experiment where he weighed six different rocks before he put them in water then he placed them in water for 20 minutes and then he took those rocks back out and weighed them again and he said that if the rock weighed more after it was in water then it must have gained um, mass from the water it absorbed. And he found that two of the stones out of the six did get heavier, the sandstone and the pumice. They both gained mass as they sat in water. So it just goes to show that things aren't always what they seem. Um, there were really, really small holes in these rocks and they were able to, uh, two of them were able to absorb water. So really, really neat. Great job, Bill does. Uh, Drew, a fifth grader, said that his project is all about how tornadoes form. There are two tornadoes in a bottle um, in the picture there. And one of them, the red one, you can see is actually swirling. So he's going to use those bottles to show how tornadoes form and how they how they work. Awesome, Drew. Um, Autumn and Havanese, both fifth graders, um, they took a look at the science behind making a ramp. And they used that ramp to test how friction acts on different objects. And they had different objects that they dropped down the ramp. And they looked at how friction is always there trying to slow down any object that happens to be in motion. 
awesome. So Andrew and Jalen, uh, there are fourth graders here, and they did the digestive system of a pig, which I've never seen before. So that was pretty neat. And they learned that a pig's digestive system works kind of like a human's digestive system. They have one stomach, which is called monogastric stomach, and humans have one stomach, um, and it's their stomach. So pigs also um, vomit, which can cause ulcers and make them very sick. They also learned that a pig has five main parts of the digestum, uh, the digestive system. They are the one-chambered stomach, a mouth, so esophagus, small and large intestines. The pig can digest vest vegetables and human food. A pig can eat anything. A human can only eat human food. When the mouth chews up the food, it goes down in the small intestines. A pig's digestive system is different from that of a cow, sheep, and goats because a goat, cow, and sheep have three compartments leading from the esophagus. Very, very interesting, Andrew and Jalen. Um, some new stuff that I did not know, and I love the, the little pig there, um, and it shows the digestive system of it. So awesome, awesome job. All right, Sarah and Alexis, both fifth graders, they looked at a different body system. Um, actually, two of them, they looked at the skeletal system and at the nervous system. And they saw and they learned that the skeletal system gives their body structure and support. And it even, even makes the red blood cells. Your blood is actually made in your bones, which is really neat. Um, and then they also learned about the nervous system and how it's kind of like wires going through your entire body. And it's controlled by the brain. And this system controls every other body system in the body. So awesome information there. Um, Chase, our fifth grader, um, he actually did a, uh, a project on sharks and he focused on their bodies. Um, it teaches about where the sharks can be found, um, the different body parts that they have, and why people hunt sharks. And that's a problem around the world is, is a lot of people overhunt the sharks and some of the species of them are disappearing. So very interesting project, Chase. Um, Juan and Diego. Their experiment, this one was pretty neat. They, uh, they looked at dent the density of water with different amounts of sugar in it. So what they did was they, um, they took different cups of water and they put food coloring in them so that they could tell the difference between them. And then they added different amounts of sugar to each one and the sugar dissolved in the water. So what they were looking at was density and that's a word that refers to how much stuff something is made of. The more density the more stuff it's made out of. By adding different amounts of sugar, the density of the water changed. Therefore, the water can stack on each other. And when it does this, you can see the different layers of the water. And if you look over here on the side of the picture that they have from what they did, the it's almost like you take blocks and put them on top of each other. The water doesn't mix if you do it carefully enough because as you can see in that picture, the red water weighs less than the yellow, which weighs less than the green, which weighs less than the blue, which allows them to stack and sit on each other. So very neat. Um, this project I had, um, I just didn't know whose it was. They didn't have a name on it, but it looked absolutely awesome. So um, if this is yours, please uh, please send me an email and let me know. But um, it was this awesome um, hobby robot here. And um, I believe it had to do with um, with ramps and, and 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 gravity and whatnot. So I really wish I knew whose that was, but I did. I still did want to show it that one off. So awesome, awesome. Um, Layla, one of our fifth graders, she looked into um, how the uh, sea levels are rising. And she said that for her science fair project, um, she did on rising sea levels. So what she did was she put two ice blocks in a fish tank and poured a little bit of water in them. Then she took a 5,000 lumen light and hung it above the tank. The light represented the sun. The ice cubes represented glaciers and icebergs that are found all around the planet and the water was the ocean. And her main question was, why are sea levels rising? And by doing some research and completing her project, she found the answer. And she said, we all know that global warming is causing the earth to get warmer and water expands when it gets heated. So it just makes sense. If the water is warmer, the icebergs are going to melt. And as more and more keep melting, they're all going to add up. Now, if we go back to my project, there are basically the same thing. The light is the sun. So it was melting the icebergs. And that's pretty much the same thing that is happening um, in real life. So very, very interesting. Um, now let's take a look at Scott's. Um, Scott looked at another body system 
and his focused on the respiratory system. Um, this is the system that allows you to um, breathe. So the respiratory system brings oxygen into the body and it gets rid of gaseous waste called carbon dioxide. He also made a model of the human lungs out of a soda bottle, tape, a balloon, straws, and plastic wrap. And it works just like our respiratory system does. Let's listen in on Austin and see what he did for his project. Hey, what's happening? It's Austin here, and I want to teach you about cool magnetic climb. So what you need to make it is iron oxide powder, liquid starch, and Elmer's glue. And then once you have it made, you can take medium magnets, with it because they're one of the strongest magnets on earth and if you take it and put it against your slime it will pull your slime up that net can eat your magnets too so don't let your magnets sit in it for a long time or you just lost 20 bucks off Amazon it pulled it up right here so that's how my next on works. So hope you enjoyed. Bye. So very neat, Austin. Um, next, Carly and Myra Lizette. Their project was about um, these four balls that were supposed to go down this slide or this ramp. And they were testing the difference between each ball because each one had a different mass. And they learned that everything overcomes friction and gravity. Like when we run, friction is trying to slow us down. And gravity is, is trying to keep us to the ground. Um, so if you look at their project, a lot of details, graphs, um, they really did an outstanding job on that. So nice job, ladies. Um, next, we have Henry Wallace. So let's take a, a listen to what he has to say. I like to call energy and conductors by Andrew Wallace. I like to call energy comes from power plant and battery, solar power plant. New coal, power plant, battery. Here are power lines from a power plant. These are spare conductors. Here are four types of conductors. Number one is copper wires. Number two is aluminum foil. Number three is graphite pencil. Number four is water. Those, number one is copper wire. Number two is aluminum foil. Number three is graphite pencil. Water. Water. Not a good conductor. Thank you. Great job, Andrew. Um, next, we have Emma Autry here, um, a fourth grader. And from what I could tell about her project is she was looking at the growth rates of different plants, or the same plant, I believe, in um, different environments. So a lot of data here, pictures to prove it, um, exactly what a scientist should be doing. So. Outstanding job, Emma. Um, next, we have Carter and Moises. Um, they looked at tornadoes. Um, so here's a picture of their project, uh, project, and they actually included their own PowerPoint here. So we're going to take a look at that. Um, it's about types of tornadoes. There's rope tornadoes, which are the smallest and most common. They get their name from their appearance. Uh, most tornadoes start and end as rope tornadoes. Um, the next type that they were they learned about and taught about was the cone tornadoes. It's similar to, similar to a rope tornado. It gets its name from its shape. They're narrow when they touch the ground, and they're more dangerous than rope tornadoes are. Wedge tornadoes are the most dangerous tornadoes in history. Their width is bigger than their height, 
and they are even given a rating of an EF3 or higher. And then there's also multi-vortex and satellite tornadoes. Some tornadoes can have multiple twisters at the same time, as you can see in that picture, and they can be lots of rope tornadoes together. There's also things called water spouts and land spouts. They can develop even if there is no thunderstorms. Water spouts are tornadoes in the water. They are weaker than most tornadoes. Land spouts are similar to water spouts. So very, very interesting information. Um, great job, gentlemen. Um, next, we have Isabella Grant, a fifth grader, and she did hers on the Yummy Gummy Bear Lab. Um, that is awesome. So her hypothesis was that she thinks gummy bears will grow in size when put in different liquids. And um, it looks like she put them in hydrogen peroxide, vinegar, water, salt, distilled water, Coke, baking soda, water, Sprite. And it looks like based on her data... The distilled water was the one in which they grew the most. And this was all about osmosis, which is the scientific process of transferring fluid between molecules. Man, she listed the variables and how it works. This is awesome. So maybe this is one you guys want to try at home um, with some gummy bears or gummy worms and see if um, you can get the same results Isabella did. So awesome job. Um, next, we have Kennedy and Kamari. Uh, they did an uh, experiment on photosynthesis. Can you change the color of flowers? So next I have um, Kennedy explaining um, herself the different parts of this project. This is a project about photosynthesis by Kamari and Kennedy. To do this project, you will need food coloring, plastic cups, white flowers, and water. The steps to do this are fill eight cups with water, food coloring two of each color. Put four flowers in the water with the stems inside the water. Put four flowers in the water with the petals inside of the water. Put the cups where they can get sunlight and watch what happens to the flowers. Our hypothesis is, our hypothesis is, was if you put white flowers in colored water the flowers would absorb the water why we thought this was happen was because for plants like flowers to survive they use photosynthesis for plants to get food they turn sunlight and water into food so they would absorb the water and change colors change colors photosynthesis means the process of green plants and other organisms using sunlight to turn carbon dioxide and water into energy for plants. The conclusion was for the blue with the petals up, the tips only change, but it was faster. The petals down, it changed more than the petals, but it took longer. For the red, more than the blue, but not on the tips. A lot more than the blue. The tips slightly changed color and it was hard to see. The flower changed all around and it and it is easy to see. With the petals up, the tips changed. With the petals up, the tips changed, but it was hard to see. Changed all around but is the hardest to see. Our tracking list goes through the different days. So the start, it was partly cloudy with no rain. The high temperature was 60. The low temperature was 23. Day number one, cloudy, light showers, 30, 60. 3, 41. Day 2, partly cloudy, light showers, 60, 53. Day 3, partly cloudy, no rain, 57, 50. Day 4, cloudy, rain, rain, 53, 42. Day five, sunny, no rain, 56, 
36. Day 6. Sunny, no rain, 54, 39. Day 7. Sunny, no rain, 60, 31. And this is our project about if you can change the color of flowers in colored water. Outstanding job, Kennedy and Kamari. Uh, that, that was awesome. Um, and Zhao here, he did, he's a fourth grader, and um, this project is all about the adaptations that the Arctic fox and the polar bear have. And they live in the Arctic tundra and need these adaptations to survive. Um, you can see he actually used the graphic organizer, Venn diagram, to show um, the differences and similarities between the Arctic fox and the polar bears and what they need to do to survive in that, that harsh environment. Next, we have Harley. Um, she did uh, a project all about minerals, and she said a mineral is a homogeneous, naturally occurring substance formed throughout geological processes. It has characteristic chemical composition, a highly ordered atomic structure, and specific physical properties. Looks like an amazing project. Um, let's listen to Aiden and his project on fingerprints. Mr. Haas, I am taking a video about my science fair project. I am Aiden and I am making a science fair project about fingerprints. The fingerprints I know are arch, tetris, loop, double loop, pocket loop, whirl, and mix. And now I'm gonna show you some facts and this is the whole board of my old thing, the arch, chassis, loop, double loop, pocket loop, and we're all mixed. This is the whole thing. These lines right here, it shows where I'm gonna put uh, tally marks about people's fingerprints. Here is all the things about facts. I put my name up here. And I said a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff about fingerprints. Facts. Every fingerprint would take significant amounts of DNA. No two people have the same fingerprint. The four fingerprints. They were bo bone measurements. Some people were born without them. Slash fingerprints. Fact: no, Koalas have fingerprint. Koalas even have fingerprints. Fact: If you did not have a fingerprint you wouldn't be able to pick up stuff and feel stuff. This is what a fingerprint looks like. I didn't do too good. I tried my best, though. That is most of the stuff. Now I'm just showing you the, um, the paper version of my facts. So I wrote all the facts from here, and I put five stuff you need to make this science project. Two boards, one, two, one pencil. I don't have a pencil on me right now. Tape. many paper to practice and a idea bye mr haas hope to see you again awesome job aiden that was an outstanding project on uh, on fingerprints um next we have a caden he did um a really neat um project all about different minerals um different types of rocks and you can see some of those rocks up around his project there. Um, I'm not a geologist, so I don't think I could tell you 
what all of those are, but I bet you he would be able to tell you what most of them are. So um, if you see a Caden, ask him about um, his project. He did a he did an outstanding job. So um, Caden and Tristan, fifth graders here, and they actually built their own barometer to predict the weather. And what a barometer is, it's a tool used to um, measure the air pressure. And they wanted to see if it could actually um, predict the weather or not. And I believe by the big yes in the middle of their board that they found that it could. Um, and you can see the pictures at the bottom. They used a glass jar, a straw, um, a piece of balloon. Um, and that was it. And you put that together and you can, you know, you can measure the pressure, which is important because pressure helps us to predict the type of weather that we'll be getting um, in the future. So um, if you see Kate and Tristan, ask them about it. They can probably tell you more about it than me. So nice job, um, gentlemen. So there were some students that I was not able to get a hold of. So I do want to still give them credit for doing it. Um, so here's our fourth graders that participate in the science fair and had their projects ready. They just weren't able to get me a picture of their project or they had already um, gotten rid of it or um, it's lost somewhere at school. Um, but here are those fourth graders. And then here are our fifth graders who, um, again, same sort of thing. I just wasn't able to get a, uh, a picture or anything about their, their project, but I know that they did it. Um, they came to our meeting the week before and they were ready to go, so I just don't have it um, with me at home, so I wasn't able to get those. So great job to all the fourth and fifth graders, and thank you for watching. I hope you were able to learn a little something um, from all these amazing, amazing students who put so much work into the science fair, and um, I can't do justice what they would have been able to tell you and show you, but this is as close as we can get right now. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you, you, know, if you saw your friends or some classmates you know, Feel free to text them or call them and ask them more about their project. And it's clear that Rocky River has some amazing young scientists. Um, and I can't wait to see what you guys do in the future. So outstanding job.